Hey everyone, so I'm going to be doing a brief overview of how the uh, AI editor works because it took me quite a while to eventually figure it out and I'd come back months at a time to try and figure it out and now I finally kind of got the basics down so got my nice checklist so we're not doing a lazy tutorial but I will have a checklist so I remember what to go through. So we're going to start with uh, starting points and other points. I'm going to make sure you have a starting point for everyone. So one for yourself, one for the AI, which will be the Zerg. Then some uh, other points we want are a gather point, and we're going to have a default one, and then one for a flyer attacks. So we'll just go to the points, put one here, call it default gather. Create another one for flyers. Call that flyer gather, and then um, I'm not going to do any more special points for the um, ground attacks. So we will add some for the flyers because we're going to want the um, flyers to try and get in the back door. So they'll come down here, then they'll attack to over here, and that'll kind of catch the player off guard. Whereas the ground attacks will just take their regular route to the base. So we'll want a flyer waypoint. And then a flyer target point. And that's about all we need to do in points. And then uh, next we want to set up our player properties because you can, the AI can really screw up if you don't. So I want to give it to the computer, the AI computer, give it its starting location, and make sure it knows what race it is so it doesn't have an identity crisis. Go and give your player his starting point. And I believe that's everything for there. See, I, uh, one thing you want to make sure is that the AI has all the correct buildings. So if you want it to be able to send roaches, then it needs a roach warren so it can build the roaches to send. And um, I also pre-placed a whole bunch of units. And you can see here it says it's available for attack waves. So it'll pick those units before it builds new ones to send into an attack wave. But if you always wanted it, that route should always be there and not be sent off for attack waves, you could click that. But um, shortly after the attack wave is sent, they'll rebuild a new roach and put it in that position, so it's not a big deal. And then we'll start with the uh, initialization triggers. So this is one that got me originally because I was thinking you'd have to start the uh, campaign AI. It's actually called Start AI Personalities for all players. So it's actually a different uh, function that would, than what was used in Wings of Liberty. And this one will let you do the, um, the uh, AI module. See, it specifically says here, and it also says you don't want to use both of them at the same time. You just want to use uh, this one. So that then, um, just so you're aware, you can set the uh, difficulty of the computer with the set player difficulty item. And you'll probably uh, set up a uh, dialogue choice so the player can choose what difficulty they want later. But for this purpose, I'm just going to throw it on hard and you can look for a dialogue tutorial to get that more specific. Let's see then. Uh, we also want to give the AI plenty of resources so that they can build their units. And some people and a lot of the blizzard maps will just refresh the resources so whenever the uh, resources get under a thousand they give the um, AI an extra 2,000 resources and that's one way to do it if you want. Um, the other is you can just give them a ton of resources from the start and they probably won't go through it. And 
their vest being two. And then uh, you also want to make sure they have plenty of supply. And I hear there's also some uh, food of a thousand feasts or something. I've never used that before. Apparently it's a unit you can throw on the map. And I think it must be in the campaign dependencies because I looked for it in here and I didn't see it. But this will work just as well. Their supplies made, just their limit, so they'll have plenty of room to make more units. Um, set them up as enemy. So one and two are enemy. Um, this is one you can set it at the beginning if you want, but you can also start it later. So run all attack waves, and it'll be for player two, and it'll be targeting player one, and we'll be setting those up in a second. So this, if you want, it doesn't have to be right at the beginning. This is as soon as you want the AI to start sending units at the uh, player. So maybe you want to wait, say their base isn't built yet, maybe you actually want it to wait till they build their command center. Then after the command center is built, that's the point where you would uh, do this action. So that's pretty much it for triggers. So now we can go to the uh, AI editor itself. I want to add personality, call it Zerg AI and general. Uh, I don't think this really matters. The source player is player two because that's the one that's sending it. And I don't think the target players, I know any works, and I think since we set it in the uh, triggers as player one, then it knows to go after player one. Um, here, we set up the default gathering point, so if we don't tell the uh, wave a point specifically, then it'll just go to this one. So we'll add a wave, and here, don't need to do anything here. I'm pretty sure the custom trigger is for like, for example, they use it in Blizzard campaigns for if they want uh, the enemy to start taunting you and stuff, and they'll usually send, uh, set up the taunt and triggers, and this'll uh, start that trigger. So we'll send some uh, Zerglings in the first wave, do eight of those, send some Hydralisk, one of those, send some Roach, two of those. So it'll make up this wave. It'll gather at the default gather point since I haven't specified one here. And their uh, timing here. So 90, this is something you'll just want to play around with the times. And obviously here, if you uncheck this, it'll change how soon they come if you edit these values. But I'm not going to bother with that in this tutorial. And again, you want to make sure the um, AI either already has all these units available by that time or can build them in time otherwise they'll just send whatever they can get and you'll just need to play with the timing and the amount of units and see what works right for your map we can go ahead and copy paste that and then say the next wave we just want to increase it a little bit and kind of the cool thing is when you don't specify a point for in this attack wave, they'll just go up, go after whatever um, nearest enemies there are on the map. So even if the player is holed out in some obscure location that's out of the way, if that's closer to them, they'll go for that first. But um, for the next wave, I'd like to go ahead and add uh, some flyer units, and I'll show you how you can set up kind of the their custom route. So we'll do some Mutalisk.
Leave six mutilisks. And timing again. You can see on the arrival times here, they add on each other. We'll just do 120, I guess. And so we're going to give them a special gather point. Flyer gather. Call it their gather point. Then we're going to give them a special target point. So this is where they're headed. And then we'll give them the waypoint in between so they kind of easily go around through those mountains. That way that's going to make um, the flyers now, instead of going to this default gather point, they'll go to this flyer gather point. Then they'll go to this waypoint and then they'll go up here and attack. And uh, one other thing, so um, so if you want to repeat waves like towards the end of the game, you kind of expect maybe the, um, the players should have already won by now. So you can repeat the final waves and you can show them here. And so you can see this is just a repeat. This is wave two all over again. This is wave three all over again. It's uh, the same thing. And it'll just keep repeating these. Or if you just want to repeat the first one, then it'll only do that flyer wave. If you were to repeat all three, then it would do this one, this one, this one, and just keep repeating them forever. And this is just showing you in the editor so you can kind of plan things out, but this isn't really necessary to have it's just for visual purposes. So maybe I just want it to do this ground wave and this flyer wave forever until the player finally finishes the game. Let's see, I believe that is all we need in the AI editor. And then just one more thing I wanted to show you was, um, so now whenever you are destroying the enemy's base, their building, since they have enough resources, they're going to continually keep rebuilding them forever until the player wins so um, one thing uh, you can actually stop them from rebuilding earlier if you need to and that would be by deactivating the bullies in the area so my example I'm gonna do is if this building here the hive gets destroyed then they won't rebuild any of these buildings anymore and that way it'll kinda give the player a way to capture the space without having the Zerg constantly annoyingly trying to uh, rebuild that base so first we're going to make a region that encompasses this entire base. We're going to call that Zerg base. And then uh, we'll go to triggers. We'll make a new trigger, call it Hive Dies. So we'll do it Dies. And we'll specify the hive on here. And keep in mind, when you're doing a specific unit that dies in an event like this, it'll only work if the um, unit is already on the map at the start. So um, otherwise, if you were using like a variable uh, that was over here, then you would have need to refer to it in a condition instead, because this wouldn't work. It would go all kinds of crazy triggering. So then we're going to uh, deactivate the bullies. Deactivate, deactivate bullies in region. So we want to deactivate the bullies in that Zerg region and that way now when this dies they won't rebuild the base anymore. So that's pretty much all there is to the um, basic waves and stuff uh, for the main game. I think I may also do like a micro tutorial as well, like a part two. And that'll do stuff like if the infester, if there's like a bunch of marines near him, he'll go ahead and automatically fungal at them. And I might do something like that as well. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and GLHF.